Hey everyone, it's time for another thrilling edition of Learning R uh, with Dr. Lindsay Waldrop. Uh, so today we are talking uh, primarily about the grammar of graphics or the ggplot2 package. Um, I've got my lecture 2.5 notebook, our uh, markdown file up here and running. Again, that should be on the uh, course GitHub page if you want to follow along. I heavily encourage you to follow along, by the way. And when we get to a check your understanding, literally pause the video and work on it. They shouldn't be too bad to figure out, but uh, that's a good way of uh, reinforcing the stuff that we're talking about instead of just passive listening. So before we get started, also, you'll want to download a few packages if you don't already have them, have them, the Lattice package, the ggplot2 package, and the tidy r package. So go ahead and do that, and then maybe come back to us. So I'll give you a second to pause. Okay, so hopefully you've been uh, able to do uh, that and get those packages up and running, and we're going to go ahead and uh, load empty cars um, and uh, load those libraries up. Okay, so let's go on. Um, okay, so we'll talk a little bit about the plotting systems of R first. So we have, uh, we've already seen in our basic graphing and great basic plotting lecture, uh, base graphics, which is based on grid. Um, this is what this sort of thing kind of looks like. Here's what the output of it looks like. Uh, it's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, what you end up seeing. Um, it's really fast. The benefits are that it's quick and simple. It handles a variety of data types. And there's really not very much background calculations. It makes it pretty speedy to do stuff. I still use base graphics all the time if I'm just, you know, uh, churning out some, uh, doing some prim preliminary data visualization. I want to plot this against this, just see if there's any patterns, stuff like that. I still use that all the time. Um, the Trellis system in Lattice is another uh, popular one for statisticians because it has a lot of really specialized plots like the density plot. Density plots are really useful. We're looking at how many, uh, uh, so the density of miles per gallon that cars get uh, um, in a data set. Okay, so uh, the benefits is that it's very quick. Um, there are lots of specialized stats plots uh, beyond just a, a simple density plot. Um, and there's really not too many background calculations here. And most of them are pushed down to base R, which makes them pretty fast. Uh, but what we're talked about, what we want to talk about is grammar of graphics or ggplot2. Um, this package is increasingly popular because it makes really, really nice plots. And it makes them really, really easily too. Uh, so this is the type of uh, uh, code that you'll do to get this plot. Um, so this is just horsepower versus miles per gallon. And it's colored by a cylinder here. Um, the benefits are that you have quite beautiful visualizations. Uh, there are many specialized types of plots. Uh, the thing that I possibly like the most is that it has really consistent syntax. Pardon me. Uh, the consistency of the syntax is just like, oh, it's wonderful if you've ever struggled with uh, weird stuff in base plot. And you have full control over the settings of this plot. So I can change every single thing on this plot from the size uh, and uh, font of the, the text to the size and placement of these points and everything in between, okay? But there are some drawbacks. It uses lots of background calculations and these background calculations tend to make it a little bit slower. Um, so if you're working with a really large data set, it can take quite some time to, to make a, a very complicated plot. Um, and it all only uses data in long format, which, is sort of a barrier for a lot of people to use it because they're used to sort of a wide data format. But to get you started, we're going to talk about both of those things today. Um, and we're going to talk about some strategies for getting data uh, data frames in um, to long and wide formats for plotting in ggplot. So let's talk about the grammar of graf graphics. Uh, this is a terminology. Um, uh, this is a terminology slide because the grammar of graphics uh, is part of the underlying syntax of ggplot2, which makes it so nice. But there's some terms to learn, so we're going to go through those really quick. So you have these data, here's the empty cars data plot, and you'd like to make a really nice plot with it. So how do you go about doing that? Um, first of all, you have your data, that's really important. Um, you have the ggplot function, which is your 
will create the base uh, uh, relationship um, that you need to plot all of this stuff out. Um, so the first thing you have to do in the first argument in ggplot is to put your data frame there. So to put your object name uh, right in that first position. The second is that we're worried about the aesthetic attributes. So what you're plotting against what, what should be colored um, by what uh, by what way and things like that. So these sort of attributes are like, what's the X, what's the Y, and what's going to be the color of the fill. Here I'm using fill as an example, uh, but you could definitely use something else uh, like group. Uh, and what we say is that we have picked obviously on the X axis this miles per gallon or MPG, and we say that this is mapped onto X. Uh, the same thing for horsepower mapped onto Y and um, cylinders, number of cylinders uh, mapped onto fill. And so the way that you do that is through within inside the ggplot function, the second argument is going to be with the AES function. And that's going to uh, be where you uh, assign what the X, the Y, and anything else that you'd like to um, uh, assign in these uh, this aesthetic mapping. Um, uh, on your plot. So just again, these are, 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 are staggered here, but this, this entire function sits within the greater ggplot, so within the, the parentheses of the ggplot function itself. Okay, so once you have that, um, uh, you notice that I have not specified how to plot this yet, right? And you specify that with what's called the geometric object. Uh, the geometric object is um, now you have all these aesthetic attributes. How are we going to arrange them and show the data uh, in what sort of, you know, geometry uh, would you plot type would you like? And so that is you'll notice an argument tacked on to the end of JGplot using a plus sign. So it's a layer that you add on top of the ggplot, the original ggplot, okay? So if you only hit enter in this ggplot, it will actually give you nothing because you haven't told it how to arrange the data into a figure yet. And you have to do that with this geometric object. So the basic parts again are your data, the ggplot function, uh, the aesthetic, uh, and how you map the data, data onto those aesthetic attributes, and then the geometric object, which tells uh, uh, tells the graphic, graphics how you want um, the aesthetics uh, related to each other. Okay, there's other stuff as well that you can add on, including scales and guides. So this is a, the legend is an example of a guide that guides your users into um, reinterpreting the data uh, based on the visual graphic. Okay, so those are all layers that you add on top of uh, or behind the, the geometric object. Okay, so your first check your understanding. So if you want to go ahead and run each one of these examples, you definitely can. Be sure, excuse me, to run this first chunk uh, that loads your library. Uh, and all of these examples are in this markdown file. You have some example code, but here, uh, starting on line um, 51, go ahead and, and do the check your understanding here. Use the orange data set, which is again is in the base package, to create a scatter plot with ggplot2 um, of circumference versus tree age. All right, so go ahead and take a pause, do that. I'm going to take a drink of water because I've been talking. Okay, hopefully you've been able to do that or hit pause and and then work on that question and come back to us. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's talk about this issue, data formats. Okay, so data wide versus long format to reap the many, many benefits of this ggplot package, you really need to reshape your data set. You may need to reshape your data set. Uh, you may not, um, it sort of depends on uh, uh, how you're taking data, but if you do, um, the two uh, sort of most common ways data are formatted or shaped are the wide um, and wider columns or represents different measurements. So you can see here each row is an individual um, and each column is a measurement on this individual seed. This is the Loblolly data set, by the way. Uh, and that's true for all of these different rows. So that's the wide. It tends to be a little bit wider um, or squarish, uh, depending on how many individuals that you're making observations on. Um, contrast that now with the long format, which each row is a unique observation. So you'll see here that we still have seed, our ID column, but now we have age, which is this year, the column names, um, which is year 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Um, and then within this were the heights of the trees measured at these years. And now those have become the, the measurements um, that are in this height column. And you can see that first 
exceed 301 at age three, the height was 4.51. So uh, what it ends up happening is that it forces the data to have one observation per row, which is really good. Um, this is a variable and this is the ID row, okay? So this is a variable that is consistent across the whole data set and this is a, the, the actual measurements, the value that you're taking. Um, you can see that this makes it much longer, right? It doesn't tend to be as wide, but it's very, very long. I think, I can't remember how many uh, seeds are in this data set, but it's quite a lot in this, this data uh, uh, observation row ends up being very, very long, which is fine. Um, but what do you do now if you have uh, data in one form or the other? You can imagine there's a lot of cutting and pasting maybe that would be involved if you were doing this in a spreadsheet. You know me, I don't want you to be in spreadsheets. I want you to be doing it through R. So all of those data analysis steps are, are nice and reproducible. So we're going to talk about two um, functions that are in the tidy R package, and that is pivot uh, underscore longer, which converts wide data into a long data format, and pivot underscore wider, which turns um, wider data uh, or longer data into a wider format. So you, you can go either way, uh, and this is in the tidy R package. So uh, let's talk about wide first, um, pivot wider. So what we want to do is we want to pivot Loblolly wide uh, into a wide set because Loblolly itself, if we go ahead and look, oops, if we go ahead and look at Loblolly, you can see that it is actually in the long format now. You can see it's 84 observations with three variables. Um, so this is okay, uh, but if we're going to practice pivoting back and forth, let's pivot wide and then pivot back to long, okay? So the pivot wide, we're going to look at a couple different things. So this is the pivot wider function in tidyr. Uh, and the first thing that you have to do is the data set that you actually, that is in long format, which you would like to pivot. Um, the second thing is the names from. So where do you get your column names from? And this is uh, going to be easy for us in the Loblolly. It's going to be this age, right? Those are the variable names that go down here. Um, and then where are the values that are going to fill each of those individual cells going to come from? And that is going to be the height, right? That's going to be the height of each of those seeds. So you can see we've run this chunk of code and produce loblolly.wide, and this is what you end up getting, is something that looks a lot like uh, what we had seen in the previous, where each one of these years has a height measurement for each individual seed going all the way down, okay? So the new columns are named based on uh, names from, so these column values are names from uh, argument, and the cell values are uh, the height here uh, in values underscore from. Okay, so sorry, I have a little bit of a typo here. This should be pivot longer. Um, so in pivot longer, you have the same sort of situation. So now we're going to take Loblolly wide, which is going to be our data set in the wide format and convert it back into the long format. See if we can do it and get some consistency there. Uh, so there's a couple um, uh, a couple more arguments I say uh, th that you need to know what they mean. First of all, the calls, um, which is which columns need to be transformed into variables. Okay, so uh, seed, uh, you know, the the uh, exclamation point seed just means everything but the seed column. Okay, so not seed, but like literally everything else. And again, if you look at this wide, you're not going to touch seed, but then three, five. 10, 15, 20, 25 is going to be fine. You'd also do a vector of 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. That's totally fine, but this is a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer. Um, the second thing you're going to need to know is the names too. And so in the names too is the name of the new variable column. And so basically you're trying to uh, describe like what how would you describe the, the column names now? Well, they're the age of the trees, right? Uh, at 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 years. So I put age here. And then the values too. So what are the values um, that you want to fill in? And uh, uh, what's the name, new name of that column? And it's going to be height because it's the height of those trees, OK? Uh, the uh, one other optional thing that I've put here is age as, as dot numeric. This, I thought this was, uh, I, I thought this was pretty useful because um, uh, this will default into a character, so turning all of these things into a character. And I was like, eh, well, I don't really want him a character. I actually want them to be numbers. So this is just giving um, additional information to this function to say, oh, you know what, age, I really want you to force that to be a numeric all in one go. 
I don't have to uh, mess with it in a separate step. Okay, so there we go. Um, so if you run this chunk, we can see what the result is, and ta-da, it looks just like the last, you know, the first loblolly, right? Here's this loblolly long, and I can't see where there are long here, this loblolly long. It's in a different order, right? The seeds are different, um, but you can see that it's uh, essentially the same, which is really, really good. Okay, so pick columns that should have data values, um, that should be the data values, and then columns that become the variables in long format. Uh, and then the name of that column is gonna be names underscore two. Okay, so that's uh, pretty easy. There's lots and lots of functionality with these pivot functions, which is great. Um, the pivot functions are just going to be super useful. Uh, you can, you know, control the the naming and and uh, all sorts of stuff. The, obviously, what what uh, data class each one of these columns is going to be. All of this stuff, different stuff, you can you can control, which is really really useful. But as base, it's not too bad to figure out. Um, either. Okie dokie. Uh, plotting. So I wanted to, when I describe this to people, sometimes they don't really quite understand what all the fuss is about. You're like, and it's not that, you know, it's not that you can't plot with a wide format in ggplot. It'll accept the wide format. It's just that you lose a lot of options when you plot in the wide format. So we have this loblolly.wide. And what I and you can see the column option. So it's it's taking again as arguments for that mapping. You can say x equals and y equals. So you can say y equals three or y y equals three, x equals seed, you know, and plot each individual seed out. But these are the column options. Um, and you're really, really limited. So if you do x equals seed and y equals three, right, the column name three, this is what you end up getting. It's not that you can't add to this. You can add five and then add 10 and then add 15 and then add 20. You can do that all manually, but you're use, losing a lot of nice functionality, um, including that legend, which does it for you quite nicely automatically in ggplot2. If you add them, I just I can't figure out how to get those manual legends to work in ggplot. So best option is to avoid wide format if you want to use ggplot2 for this sort of thing. But in the long format, so here's our, our wide plot right here. Uh, but in the long format, you just got so much more functionality and it doesn't suffer the same issues that the wide format does. Okay, so here are our column options for loblolly.long. You have seed, you have age and height. So if you think about what you really wanna see in those data, which what are you interested in in terms of the relationship between those data, it's gonna be something like age versus height, right? So you can set those as uh, columns um, as map to eight X uh, for age and Y for height and then color for seed if you wanna break it down even further. And so what you end up getting is this like just gorgeous little plot. Um, you know, it could use some work and the seed legend is, is a little excessive, but again, um, it gives you that functionality to look at these sort of trends um, much more easily with uh, less code. So we can run that example as well. Ah, yay, it's nice. Of course, it's cutting off because uh, it's so small here. Um, the other thing is that you can push, push a lot of calculations for plot types into ggplot, so you don't have to worry about doing those calculations yourself. And so two I'll go over really quickly are, and this again, it's not changing anything about this lob, the, the ggplot itself, it's just changing, all you do is change the geo, geometric object or geom that you're tacking onto the end of that command. So here's a box plot. Again, a really nice way of uh, summarizing the statistics uh, uh, of all of those samples um, based on age, you'll notice here that I'm ch changing age to factor because it doesn't like continuous data um, to do that box plot. Uh, but the other one I really love is a uh, geom violin. And again, all of this is exactly the same between these two. Uh, the only thing that's really different is tacking on that geometric object and everything else is done for you. So again, the age, um, this shows you sort of the distribution uh, along y um, at each x value, which is you know, kind of nice because it looks, uh, it gives you, I think, a little bit more information than the, the your standard plot, box plot would. Okay, let's do our violin plot too. Da, da, da. It's nice. I really like it. Okay, and as you can see, you have another check your understanding. Um, this time it has two answers that you need. So answer one and answer two. And so what I'd like you to do is try to reshape the fish Uncounters data set in the tidyr package. Okay, this is a data set that's just provided in tidyr package. Um, 
And then uh, I will, want you to shape that into a wide format. And then with the religion income data set, again, in that package, uh, shape it into a long format. So do this answer one and answer two. I'll take a break, you know, take a break, pause the video, work on this a little bit. See, see if you can't get it to work. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten a chance to, to get those down, get those working, um, and get those answers in. Okay, so I'm going to save here. Okay, so let's talk about changing plot attributes. So a lot of times when you learn how to plot, the first thing you learn is how to do things like change basic attributes, ax axes labels, plot title, you know, point shapes, stuff like that. And we can do that here too. So we're going to use this base plot. And another really fun thing is it, that you can sort of store these base plots uh, into P. You'll notice that if you run just this P line, since you're storing that, it's not going to plot it out for you there. But uh, each, in, each time that you don't store it, it will plot for you. So if you want to look at this base P, you can just hit P um, on a different line, and that will play it for you. But I've set these up uh, uh, as examples here that are really good. So let's talk about labels and titles. The x-axis label is just xlab. And again, it's add, adding to, um, it's adding as another layer on top of the layers in P, okay? So here's changing the x, uh, x label, you know, something really nice, miles per gallon instead of, instead of this, just that default, which is the, the column title there. Um, the y label, again, is just ylab. Uh, it's really, really super straightforward. And again, it's not changing this and this because I'm tacking both of these on P separately. And then the GG plot GG title, which will give you a nice title here, um, horsepower versus MPG for empty cars. Okay, um, so those are all really straightforward. Uh, Axie scales are another way of uh, another layer that you can add XLM and YLM. Um, you can add separately. Uh, so this is the XLM scale. You can see that this takes two arguments, both numeric, um, the lower bound and the upper bound here. Uh, same with Y, the Y upper and lower bound as well. So those are really, really easy. Uh, there's also a limbs, which takes a bunch of different types of argument, including color. You can set new limits for color, uh, but there's no color here. So there's no example. You can do that yourself. You can also have a lot of control of plot area. Um, so here, uh, there's uh, most items are going to be in your theme category. So this is stuff like the text size, the text font, uh, the background coloration, the mark coloration of those delineations, things like that. Uh, most of those arguments are going to be here. Again, you have lots and lots of granular control over what's going on on this plot surface. So you can go just nuts about getting all of the things exactly how you like it. Uh, you can really go down a rabbit hole. Um, the syntax there becomes a little bit uh, complex, uh, but again, it's all really consistent. Once you learn it, it's it's pretty easy to, to, to get through. And I'll point out this theme. So it, in this example here, I've used theme to change the text element size to 20. So just make it really, really big. And then the axis uh, text size, um, I've, I've rotated it by, uh, by 90 degrees. So that's kind of a fun thing to do as well. I will also point out the minimal. So there's sort of uh, pre-packaged themes for you that you can just tack on to the end and it'll do a nice job of doing that for you. And this pre-packaged theme just makes it kind of nicer and cleaner uh, as opposed to the, the um, base ggplot graphics right there, okay? Sounds good. All right, so changing aesthetic values. So these are things, um, so we're gonna use this as our base for P2. It's just going to be a really super basic ggplot plus uh, geopoint. Um, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of the geopoint because we're gonna uh, assign ggplot to P2 and then uh, tack on that ge geometric object onto P2 for each of these stages, okay? So if it is independent of mapping, so the, all of these things are independent of mapping. I haven't mapped any of the data onto these things. We're just changing them as you would change anything else, okay? So they're independent of mapping um, in these examples. So you can change point size, fill, color, and uh, shape. Okay, so in all of these uh, instances of the, the graphics, so this one's changing a size, um, it's size two, so it's double the uh, whatever the default would be um, there. Uh, point shape, we go to, I think I've changed point shape to three, so now it's doing you plus signs for me. 
which is pretty cool. Um, it also works with PC PCH as well, uh, shape or PCH. I can't remember what PCH is, just use shape. Um, doing the color is, uh, is is also an option just with color and if you'd have if you have a shaper a pch which has both an inner point color or a, an outer color and an inner point fill then you can change it um, using color and fill so that's the black outer uh, outline and then the fill inside in red okay so yet another check your understanding. Um, I'm trying to really make this break it down and make it super nice and granular. So you have plenty of time to practice with all of these things. So to the last plot um, that you did in both check your understanding, which is the orange plot, um, go ahead and add axis labels and a title, um, change the color, shape, and uh, color, shape, and color, fill of the points um, or size, one of those two. I'll, I'll fix that when, we, uh, when I do that, it's a typo. Uh, and rotate the x-axis labels by 45 degrees. That's a nice little challenge for you there. Okay, so do that. Try it out. Come back. Okay, hopefully you've had some time to try this out and we can move on because I want to really just quickly talk about grouping. So um, grouping and aesthetic values. So uh, it's, it's always nice to be able to have this granular control, but a lot of things you actually want to map, um, like color or fill, you want to map onto uh, the aesthetic qualities of that thing. Um, but it's really easy to change group characteristics uh, using AES in that ggplot function, including a specific char character that you want, or use group to define those later, OK? So assigning colors based on sill or cylinder. Um, so here's our base thing that we're going to work off of, and here's the, the plots right here, OK? So changing color here. Uh, and again, I've, I've, I've made, um, I believe, factor in uh, uh, the cylinder number into a factor here, so it's a little bit cleaner. Uh, OK, so this is how to do it. Um, uh, you're changing that color based on uh, the cylinder, and this is what you end up doing. If you've done this correctly, then you should have a nice pretty legend that pops up. If you're doing it incorrectly, then that legend won't be there, <laughs> which is a good indication that uh, you're not mapping things correctly. Uh, so you can also sign fill. Again, I'm changing the shape to be uh, 21, so we have that nice circle with the outer black and the inner fill. Um, and then the shape based on that factor as well. So we can do shape based on that factor. And if you don't specify what shapes you want, it will just do some shapes for you, okay? So all of those things can be changed based on fill and you do it up here in the ggplot function in this AES argument. Um, okay, so mapping aesthetics based on data. Okay, mapping aesthetics that change with data has to be done using AES. This will not work if you just put colors equal, OK? So here is the correct mapping. You can see it's inside the AES here, right? Um, and that maps correctly. You get this nice little thing right here, a nice little uh, legend. I haven't turned it into fa a factor, so it's, it's reading it as a continuous variable. This maps correctly, OK? This is how you're supposed to do it. Uh, you can sort of force it by by going into the geo point and trying to say, oh, color equals cylinder. OK, that's OK, but it maps incorrectly. You can see that there's some weird color stuff going on. It may line up OK with the actual data, but you don't get that legend, which is kind of nice. And that's, and it, you know, you're going to get into trouble doing that down the line. So really, this is an incorrect way uh, of this mapping. Um, uh, on uh, the color uh, cylinder onto that color data, okay? Um, changing non-math aesthetics can be done anywhere, okay? So you can do it in Sime Geo Point as long as you throw it into the AES and then define color within that. That tells ggplot, okay, like, yeah, I know that I didn't get around to doing it while I uh, originally defined the, the ggplot, but I need you to map this color and I also need you to map it uh, 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 to an aesthetic value um, on the plot, and that will map correctly. Okay, so here's that example as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, so mapping also uh, maps onto several things. So it doesn't just map if you map color over here inside the AES, it will uh, uh, map that onto the geom point and also onto the geom line automatically, in case you don't have to worry about it. Okay, 
And here's another example of incorrect. Don't do this. Oh my gosh. All right. Adding data to existing plots. Adding data manually um, from other sets can be very clunky. Like it's not a thing that I enjoy doing with ggplots, but it can be done, but it should be avoided when possible. Okay. So if you are continually having to do this, especially with data that should be in the same set or is in the same data object, then you are most likely using an incorrect format. Okay. So consider putting it in that long format so you can get rid of a lot of these issues. Okay, but you can do it. So like one of the things I've done in the past is use like a GM tile for like a color tile thing and then put bird um, uh, bird morphology mapping on this tile. Okay, like those are two completely different sets of data and I needed to map them uh, independently and add, uh, add the birds onto the existing plot. And you can do that. So we're going to do this P2, and it's going to be this little plot, which is the, the original sort of wide uh, plot format where you're doing Y th is, is the third year um, height against seed uh, in it, on a GM point. Uh, you can ask, also add your five data onto this, and so this is what you end up getting. Um, and it's adding as red dots. Okay, so you can totally do this. Look, it works. There's that. There's that. Um, the data has to be specified using data. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, in P2, you've defined this here. In P2, you're adding another layer that's also a geo point. You have to re say, okay, I, I want Loblolly wide for the data and mapping equals and redefine the map. So X equals C and Y equals five this time. And then tell me what color it is, okay? So the data has to be specified using the, the data equals object. The mapping has to be specified in the geom using mapping equals and that AES function, okay? Other attributes have to be set independently in that geom. Um, so you can get into a lot of problems, as you can imagine, uh, with these things fighting against each other, uh, the original plot trying to overwrite the stuff, and you're trying to overwrite it, and it just becomes a mess. So consider the long format, which gets rid of most of these problems. Also, I really cannot figure out how to make a legend this way. <laughs> it is really, really not great um, and, and not friendly to try to do a legend and GG plot it all this way. And, and I don't know if that's intentionally uh, uh, by design, so they are trying to force you to do it the correct way, but it is sort of a pain in the rear end. And it's ugly, it won't give you a correct line. <laughs> so all these things to consider. Okay, uh, check your understanding. So put here, um, coloring the points by tree. So in the last plot you did, you added a bunch of stuff to it, and now I want you to color the plot points by tree instead of just them being red or them being orange or something like that. Um, adding colors, uh, adding lines to the link data, uh, adding lines that link the data between individual trees. Okay, so not all of the data together, but actually that go in between those lines. So it's a nice line and point graph. So consider doing that as a check your understanding. Okay, so um, there are a variety of geometric objects available to you. Um, scatter plots, line plots, box plots, violin plots, bar plots, contour plots, density plots, plot a map, rectangles and rasters and tiles, quantile quantile plots, stacked dot plots, histograms, and even more. Um, but what I want you to do is uh, here, um, for our skill check 2.1, what we're going to do is uh, for the next two class periods, you're actually going to present on these plot types and tell us how to use these things. So um, you have been assigned groups in Canvas, uh, if you're actually in my class. Um, and you're going to work in the small group to prepare some sample code using each of the following geometric objects. So the first group is going to do geom point, geom line, and geom QQ line. Uh, the second group is going to do geom bar, box plot, and violet. Uh, the third group is going to do the histogram and geom density plot. Oh, here we go. Uh, the fourth group is going to do uh, and dot plot. Uh, the fourth group is going to figure out how to put data on maps, which is pretty cool. And then geom raster, and geom tile, and geom contour. Um, the sixth group uh, is going to be really fun because you there are so many other uh, plot types 
um, 101 registered extensions available to explore. So you have animations that you can do in ggplot. You have specialty stats plots. You have all sorts of patchwork stuff. So if you want multiple uh, uh, multiple plots on one sort of figure, putting it together automatically, you can do that. Um, all manner of themes. Um, uh, look at that. That's awesome. I don't even know what that is. It's so cool. Uh, so you get to pick, the sixth group gets to pick one or two of these different plots uh, that they think might be useful and do some sample code with that. Okay, so um, that is, uh, again, and you're going to present those um, and have a little bit of sample code ready. Um, what each plot looks like, what data are appropriate to use, and what plots will generally tell us about the data. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, here are some more excellent resources that I routinely use for um, my own plotting uh, uh, information and uh, needs. Um, the Tidyverse Reference Guide, Data Visualization with R, which is a great book, and the R Graphics Cookbook, which is just a great helpful guide of, okay, I don't really want to know like the theory behind all of this, just tell me how to do it. That's the book that you need. I flip it open all the time, okay? Uh, and also, all of these, I think, believe are online in their entirety. Okay, so additional resources are here. Um, help me put together this uh, slideshow presentation. And here are your action items. That chain chapter is gonna line up with each one of these uh, plots. And uh, you're going to prepare that skill check one, uh, 2.1 in your groups. So that's it for me. Um, and uh, yeah, happy coding. <laughs>